So to understand that, first we need to understand what is blockchain. You must have heard this term number of times in newspapers and through your friends in your conversation. Now, what is a blockchain? In a simple form, blockchain is nothing but a chain of blocks. <laughs> okay. well, actually, it's one of the definition, but it's like every block has some information. It's a ledger. So every block is a ledger, copy of a ledger. And every copy of the ledger is connected to each other. So every block has some information. Got it? And every block is connected to each other in a chronological manner. So like number one, number two, number three, and so on. And everybody is connected to each other. Right? Now, the beauty is that the information the blockchain, the copy of the ledger, I said, uh, the, the ledger is available with all the participants, that is nodes in the network. When I said all these participants, you can say every participant is connected to other eight participants, right? So every node is connected to each other and every node has a copy of a ledger that even if B, node B moves out, even if node C takes an exit, node A and D are still there. Even if out of these four nodes, three nodes, they move out. Even if node A is there, blockchain will keep working. And if node B, if tries to manipulate the ledger, node A, D and C will reject it. They will get to know. An alert will be sent to the network. Nobody can manipulate the network because everybody has the same copy. Everybody has the same copy of the ledger. And if somebody tries to change the ledger, every single node will get to know about it and then they will reject that. Now, that is the power of distributed ledger. How this is achieved is that every block has some information. Now we are getting onto the blocks. Every block has some information. Now, what is that information? That every block has a transactions that I am sending Bitcoin to somebody, somebody sending Bitcoin to me. So every block has the list of transactions. But as I said that every block is unique. So every block has a unique identification number like Aadhaar card. My Aadhaar card is unique to me. Can you copy that Aadhaar card? Can you take my Aadhaar card? You can physically take it, but I you cannot get my Aadhaar card number to yours because it's unique to me. Right. So similarly, every block is unique. Every block has a hash attached to it. Now, what is hash? Hash is like a fingerprint. It is unique. So every every block has a hash. It cannot change. It is unique to that block. Right. And the beauty is the hash of this block is mentioned in the block next to it. So the hash of block number one, the information, the hash is present in block number two. So both are interconnected. You can see the hash of block number two is available, is mentioned in block number three. Where it is mentioned? As I told you, hash of block number one is mentioned in block, num block number 51 is mentioned in block number 52. Hash of block number 52 is mentioned in block number 53. So what happens that once you try to change the hash of block number two, the moment you change it, it will have a mismatch because you changed it to H62Y. The previously it was 6BQ1, the entire network will get to know, oh my God, some change has happened. Some change has happened everybody will get to know about it now how this hash gets generated hash is a process where you know i put in something i, I so the hash is basically an algorithm right it's a software understood in a very easy manner i put some value and it converts it into 64 uh, 64 uh, digit long hexadecimal so alpha numeric number so basically it will say if i want to say i love you and i don't want to say it publicly i write it i wrote it down in a code and send it to you and the moment you knew it okay this code means this got it so i can codify things 
obviously this was used in army and this was used by detectives right so as those cypher punks they were fighting for privacy remember so they said that the that the language should be encrypted the data should be encrypted when it is traveling on the internet when you connect to whatsapp whatsapp tells you it's end to end encrypted meaning if i am talking to shivali and if i'm sending some message to shivali that is only intended to be read only by shivali nobody else in the middle can read our conversation end to end encrypted so here if you see a uh, bit inning i wrote bit inning here in the software it converted it into a hash right so if you see even if if i if i change a little bit of you know information here you know that information will get changed right so the hash how this hash gets generated is the moment you put your data here right the moment you you put your data here the hash gets generated now if you manipulate a little bit of data the hash will get changed so what happens that if somebody gets an access to the block and tries to change the data the hash gets changed At the moment this hash gets changed the block next to this you know gets a uh, get, uh, get to know that something has happened in this block the all the participants they get to know about it and they put in a alert right so how this hash now somebody has to put this blocks into this chain they are not getting added to this blockchain automatically right somebody has to perform of job of putting these blocks into this blockchain now the person who does it is called miner like imran bhai is uh, uh, imran bhai says out of all these people right out of all these people few said we want to be the miner nobody can stop you even i can be the miner you can be the miner and the mining is a process where the miner job is to add these blocks into the blockchain now how to do that the why miner will do that the incentive of the miner to add these blocks in the blockchain is to get bitcoin in return so if somebody adds block to the blockchain will get bitcoin in return now because you get bitcoin which is very precious right in the market it is $20000 there is a competition because it's an open market anybody can mine it so there is a lot of competition to add blocks in the blockchain now since it's a democratic way of find of adding it because anybody can do that there is a competition everybody is participating in that competition now what is the competition the competition is to find that hash that is acceptable by all the other member in the network i mean the network in totally all the members automatically the software defines that whosoever will find this problem will whosoever will find a particular number say suppose a number that starts with 40 will get to win the the uh, task of adding a block and he will win the reward so what happens the miners they run and they try to find that lottery ka number now this numbers look lottery numbers looks easy you know that fine my luck will work but finding a lottery number the number that gets a hash that number that gets that number that that gets me this hash and this hash the moment i add it on a blockchain and that is acceptable by everybody now to find this number is as difficult as finding an atom in the universe i mean just to give you an example the world's top 400 supercomputers together cannot find this number that is the difficulty level of finding this number so you need hash rate for hash rate you need specific devices hardware devices and those are capital intensive so mining is a very difficult task to find this lottery ka number that gets me this hash and that allows me to win this 
uh, the the win me to add this block into the blockchain so that is the reason even if the attacker if if somebody has to hack the blockchain has to generate this lottery ka number to even change something in the block so that is the reason even hacker has to spend the similar more than 51% hash rate he has to acquire to change the data in a block that is the reason blockchains are very secure and that is the reason if somebody finds this number he tells it to the network i have got it everybody else in the network says uh, just look at it look at this guy this guy has performed his work or not proof of work this guy has worked as per the standards they say yeah 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 he has worked as per the standards okay got it consensus gave him his bitcoin gave him the reward and put this block in the blockchain and the moment that block is added to the blockchain the ledger is immutable you can't change it so once i have spent my money and that has been entered into the ledger now that is there till eternity till eternity till when the this world will survive that blockchain will survive my data on the ledger i cannot spend my money twice it is immutable that's the power of blockchain and that is the reason the bitcoin blockchain bitcoin gave us immutability you can't change the ledger censorship resistance nobody can just go and block the network many countries have tried it it is censorship resistance if some country tries to uh, ban it it moves to another country it's available on internet you can't ban internet censorship resistance consensus mechanism there is there are rules that are defined that how consensus will be achieved permissionless i can join the network i can exit the network anybody can join the network anybody can be the miner nobody needs a permission there is no central bank there is no financial institutions there is no individual there is no government there is no boss there is no subordinate there is no employee there is no shareholders there is no regulator the only thing that everybody believes is the bible now that bible is not the bible that we know the bible is the consensus mechanism the software code that has been written in 2008 by satoshi nakamoto that how this network is going to run and everybody agrees to that and this network is decentralized decentralized because the nodes that i that you see it in this photograph are close to half a million half a million people are giving their computer the laptops just to run the ledger to run the ledger miners are something who are mining who are capitalist by mindset they want to do that work to earn bitcoin the nodes are activist they are saying we see hope in this network this is open this is trying to do something very credible let me give my resource to this network more than half a million people in the world are giving that can you can you can you destroy half a million people and that too they are situated at different part of the world different part of the universe that's the power of bitcoin